long before na ito ay naganap. So, tingnan po natin, yung sa verse 1, pwede natin tingnan na yung title ng verse 1 is From Gloom to Glory. From Gloom to Glory. Kasi naman yung gloom, gloomy, walang buhay. Ba? Gloom is darkness. Pag sinabi ko na yung mukha mo, so gloomy, ibig sabihin, hindi lamang parang Bernie Santo, but this is parang dinaasin ka ng bagyo o mga kapigintian. So, sabi ko sa verse 1, But there will be no gloom for her who brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond Jordan, Galilee of the nation. So, matalim doon, yung sa verse 1, napakalaga, pag tinignan mo yung Bible, meron nakalagay na but, or therefore, or so. Ibig sabihin, magkata mo yung but, you have to go back doon sa kung ano yung sinundan niya. Yung prayo, tinatawag na immediate verse. So, dahil sinabi niya yung but sa verse 1, so tingnan natin yung verse 22 ng chapter 8 ng Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 22. Ano po ba yung sinasabi? So tingnan po natin kung ano yung sinasabi sa Isaiah chapter 8 verse 22. Kung may mga Bible po kayo, ayan gano'n siya na uh, tingnan para makasahin nyo yung sinasabi po natin ay masasumpungan sa salita ng Panginoon. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 22, sabi niya, And they, he's talking to the Israelites, And they will look to the earth, but behold, distress and darkness, the gloom of anguish, they will be trust into thick darkness. Ulit, babasahin ko po. And they, the Israelites, look to the earth, but behold, distress or kapinghatian, and darkness, kadiliman, and the gloom of anguish. Hindi lang ang gloom, but it's yung anguish. And then, sabi doon, they will be trust. Yung word na trust is plans. They will be deep. Parang ibina, ibinabad. They will be plans or trust into thick darkness. Not just simply darkness, but thick darkness. Yun po yung verse 22, chapter 8. It's a pronouncement of judgment. It's a pronouncement of condemnation sa bayang Israel. Bakit po? Because they have forsook the Lord, sumamba sila doon sa ibang Diyos-Diyosan, and so God gave them over doon sa Assyria. Malang yung preaching about Jonah, yung sa Luke, di ba? Tapos saan si Jonah ayaw pumunta ng Nineveh. Why? Because the Assyrian, eto yung sinusuppress sila, inooppress sila. And then, ala ba saan, nagpupunta ka doon para yung mga tao, pangalan mo, para sila maligtas. Ayaw yung Jonah yun. Why? Because mga salbahe yung mga Nineveh, yung mga Assyrian. But then, sabi sa verse 1 ng chapter 9, But, so after ng judgment, after ng pronouncement na ito yung mga nasa nila, there will be distress, darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be plunged into thick darkness. Verse 1, immediately after ng chapter 8, verse 22, But, sabi ka agad, But, there will be no gloom. Diba? Now, it's a promise. After the pronouncement of judgment na ibibigay ng Diyos sa kanila because of their idolatry, because of their unfaithfulness, God has secured for them a future. Future na ano? There will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. And then, sabi niya, in the former time, Sa nakalipas, sabi niya, He, God, brought 
into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Yung pong lugar na, yung pong word na Zebulun at saka yung Naphtali, Magandang magandang hapon po sa mga kapatid natin ng paso sa taga Dubai at sa Gabo Dabi. Sa mga tapo natin, pagdating sa chapter 9 verse 1, na kung saan makikita natin dito yung from gloom to glory. From gloom to glory. Sabi niya, sinipunan niya yung verse 1, but there will be Verse 1, chapter 9. Verse 1, chapter 9, sinamalan po niya, But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Natapon natin doon, sabi mo nga kanina, sinaman niya yung verse 1 ng chapter 9 noong sa word na but. Conjunction po ito, ibig sabihin, we have to go back doon sa immediate na verse. Which is yung chapter 8, verse 22. Para makuha natin yung context na sinasabi niya sa verse 1 ng chapter 9. So going back doon sa chapter 8, verse 22, ito po yung sinabi ng Diyos patungkol sa bayang Israel. Sabi niya sa verse 8, uh, verse 22 of chapter 8 And they will look to the earth But behold Distress, darkness And gloom of anguish And they will be thrust Into thick darkness So ito po yung pronouncement ng Diyos Because dun sa unfaithfulness Ng bayan Israel They worship other gods May mga high places sila Worship of Baal, worship of Dagon at iba pang mga multiple gods sa kanilang sinasamba doon sa high places. And so, God gave them over doon sa Assyria. Yung Assyria, ito yung, ito yung mga taga-Ninevites. Kaya ayaw ni, ni Jonah na pumunta ng Nineve is because yung mga Assyrian, ito yung sumasakop sa kanila. So, makita natin dito yung pronouncement ng Diyos, the chapter 8 verse 22, that there will be distress, darkness, gloom of anguish and they will be plants o ibababad sila into thick darkness. So yung context na yun, hinatulang sila ng Diyos that they, will be, that they will be judged. They will suffer. They will experience anguish and thick darkness and sabi doon, gloom of anguish. But then immediately, pagdating sa chapter 9 verse 1, Nakita natin doon yung pangako ng Diyos sabi niya, but So mayroong judgment, may condemnation, may as warning given to them And yet, after ng verse 22, immediately sabi doon, but there will be no gloom Kanina, gloom, anguish, thick darkness But now, sabi niya, but there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish And then sabi niya, in the Former time, sabi niya, in the former time or in the past, he brought them, he, God, brought them into contempt, the land of Sebulun and the land of Naphtali. Yung Sebulun at saka Naphtali, ito yung dalawa sa anak ni Jacob. Na kung saan, ito ay naging lugar, naging tribe of Israel. Na kung saan, bahagi sa northern tribes. Di ba, nung yung Israel, nahati siya sa dalawang bahagi, Northern tribe composed of 10 tribes and then yung southern tribe at yung Judah at saka Benjamin. So itong dalawang tribe na to, Sebulun at saka yung Naphtali, ito yung nasako ng Assyria. They were imported. Dinala sila ex and export sila papuntang Assyria. And then, nagdala sila ng mga Assyrian o iba-ibang lahi papunta dun sa uh, Israel, kaya nga yung mga nandun ay mga Samaritan, mixed blood hindi sila pure Jewish blood, kaya kinamumuhiyan sila ng mga 
at taga Judah o sa Southern Tribe. And ang nakita po natin dito, just to give us a, yung glimpse, ano ba yung sinasabi dito na kung saan in the former time. Pagbabasahin niyo po yung 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 29. 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 29, sabi doon, In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, eto na po yung sa northern tribe, sabi doon, Tiglat Pilsir, sabi doon, king of Assyria, came and captured Ejon Abelbet Maka, Janowa, Cades, Hazor, Gilead, and sabi doon, so sinabi niya yung mga nasakop ng hari ng Assyria, and then sabi doon, all the land of Naphtali. And then sabi doon, he carried or deported the people captives to Assyria. So dineport niya yung mga tao, at sinasabi ngayon na. And then nagdala siya ng ibang tao doon sa bayan Israel. So nakita niyo doon, na kung saan, ito yung pronouncement ng Diyos sa kanila that there will come a time na sila ay sasakupin ng Assyria at pag nasakup sila ng Assyria, sila ay tatanggalin doon sa kanilang bayan at sila ay magiging dayuhan. So yun po yung sinasabi doon, doon sa chapter 8 verse 22 na kung saan merong pronouncement of judgment to the nation of Israel, particularly doon sa northern tribe. Kasi later on, yung sa southern tribe, ilipas pa yung ilang panahon bago sila sasakupin ni Nebuchadnezzar ng Babylon. So baka po natin dito, babalikan natin uli yung sa verse 1 ng chapter 9, but there will be no gloom, sabi doon, for her who was in anguish. So baka natin doon, in the former time, sabi niya sa verse 1, Repairing, sinasabi niya, gloom. Para ba ang titignan mo, equation, former time is equivalent to sa gloom, darkness, anguish. But then, may pangako siya, sabi niya. But then, but in the latter time, latter, may sabihin, in the future, sabi niya, he made glorious. Ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, from gloom to glorious, yung verse 1. From gloom, there is judgment, there is condemnation, but there was a promise. There is a glorious promise sa kanila. Sabi niya, in the latter time, He made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond Jordan, Galilee of the nation. So the gloom will be replaced with glory in the future. And as sinasabi doon, Yung land na sinabi doon, land of Sebulun and land of Naphtali, ito yung boundary. Boundary between doon sa beyond Jordan, na kung saan, kasunod doon, ito na yung territory of the Gentiles. After the sea, ito yung sa Sea of Galilee. Na kung saan, land of Sebulun, Naphtali, paglabas mo doon, para bang boundary, paglabas mo doon, end na ng land of Israel, land of the Gentile na yung kasunod. And he said it all. They will be glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan of the nation. Ito yung surrounding nation after, sabi mo kanina, sa territory ng bayan Israel. Nakita natin doon, recounting yung pangako ng Diyos kay Abraham doon sa Genesis na kung saan, by implication, the, God, the promise made to Abraham that in you, sabi niya, and in your seed, all the nation of the earth will be blessed. So it's not just about promise sa bayang Israel, but it transcends beyond Israel. Yung pangako, even do sa mga Gentile, which kasama po tayo doon. Hindi lamang pangako sa bayang Israel, but to sa pangako ng Diyos, yung promised blessing na kung saan in you, in Abraham and in his seed or through his seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed nakita po natin doon from promised judgment there is promise na glorious kingdom and glorious inclusion of the Gentile to sa mga pangako ng Diyos Kay Abraham, kay David, at even pangako sa ating Panginoon Jesus. So 
pagpunta po natin doon, even pagbabasahin niyo yung sabi kanina, yung mga pangako kay Abraham, babasahin yung Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 18, pati basahin ko lang yung chapter 22 verse 18. Sabi sa Genesis chapter 22 verse 18, long before nagkaroon ng offspring si, si Abraham. Sabi ng Diyos kay Abraham, and your offspring, referring to offspring without S, and your offspring, in your offspring, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed in your offspring. Going back to Galatians, he's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. That in your offspring, the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Handun po yung pangako ng Diyos, si of Abraham, who is Christ. So mga po natin dito, yung from glow, from glow to glory and the promise given to Israel by God Himself is transcendent. It's not just pertaining sa bayang Israel, but pus yung inclusion. Yung one day may sasama yung mga hentil to the point na pagka nabuo na complete yung church, makita natin, there's no Gentile, there's no Jew anymore, but a new man in Christ Jesus. Ito yung pangako ng Diyos na kung saan there's a promised glory sa bayang Israel. Why? Because yung it will transcend beyond them. Yung pangako ng Diyos. So makita natin yung kapaskuhan, it's not just about the gift giving. Na kung saan exchange gift. Ay? Misa pag ilang paskuhan, di ba? Mga nasa Pilipinas, special na sa abroad tayo. Oh, tatay, nanay, oh, tito, tita. Kung papasko na po, ano po yung gift namin? At as if yung kapaskuhan is just about exchange gift, about receiving gift from one another. And then back po natin yung verse 2. So yung verse 1, from gloom, from gloom to glory, yung verse 2 makita natin, from darkness to light. So verse 1, from gloom to glory, and verse 2, from darkness to light. So ulit, sabi na sa verse 1, di ba? But there will be no gloom. But then pagdating niya sa verse 2, the people who walk in darkness, gusto mo i-note niya doon, sabi niya, the people who walk in darkness. Merong darkness, but then the people, they are walking in darkness. Have seen a great light. And those who dwell in thick darkness. So may makita niya doon, sabi niya, una, there are people who walk in darkness. And there are people who dwell in the land of thick darkness. Yun po sinasabi doon, those who walk, at yung mga tao na yung kanilang manner of life, yung kanilang pamumuhay, as if they are living in darkness. But then yung sinasabi naman na pangalawa, those who dwell in deep darkness, ito yung kanilang citizenship, ito yung kanilang identity, ito yung kanilang identification. They are children of darkness. They are children of the devil. So, mga po natin dito, but then there's a promise sa sinasabi ng those who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Hanina, gloom to glory, there's a promise seed na usan it transcend Israel but the inclusion of the Gentile, but then this time sinasabi niya, the people, because of the promised condemnation, that's a chapter 8, verse 22, as the context and background, sabi niya, those who walk in darkness because of their idolatry, because they have forsook God, and they worship idols rather than the Creator, they were living in darkness, but then, because of what God has promised, He said, they have seen a great light. And then, second line down, verse 2, sabi niya, those who dwell, those who were identified as children of the devil, those who dwell in the land of thick darkness, on them has light shown. Actually, kinote po ito ng Panginoong Jesus. 
dun sa sa Matthew. Even tinop ni nito ni uh, ni Apostle Paul dun sa First Corinthians. Na saan, the light of the gospel shone. Na kung saan, sa sabi doon, formerly, we are not only walking in darkness, but we are children of darkness. But we have been transferred into the marvelous light of His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, because of what Christ accomplished doon sa mga buhay po na natin. So, mga po natin dito, let us see, ano ba yung nakikita ni Isaiah doon sa promise na there will be a light that would come to vanquish yung thick darkness. Para ma-dispel yung darkness, matalo yung kadiliman ng kaliwanagan. Gaano ba kaliwanag yung nakikita ni Isaiah which was prophesied perhaps 700 years bago yung fulfillment niya sa buhay ng ating Panginoong Sus. Sabi sa Isaiah, Chapter 9, verse 6, with the same passage natin, sabi doon, for, tanda natin, pag nakita mo yung word na for, ito yung conjunction, ibig sabihin, ito yung ground, ito yung cross, ito yung basihan ng mga pangako. Sabi niya, for, to us a child is born. So the promises, the benefits of those promises relies and depends doon sa for, to us, a child is born. Without this child, without this son being born, without the son being given, all the promises, yung mga benefits ng pangako ng Diyos, hindi natin makukuha. Kaya ang pag-aaral natin doon sa uh, training seminar natin kahapon ng two days, usually, ang mga tao, because Hindi maliwanag sa kala yung benefits of the gospel and the gospel itself. Sometimes people preach only the benefits. Sino bang ayaw ng eternal life? Sino bang ayaw na ma-reconcile sa Diyos? Sino bang ayaw na magkaroon ng mag aayos sa buhay? But all these are the benefits of the gospel. Without the gospel, you will not receive the benefits of the gospel. And same thing po sa sinasabi dito, na kung saan, there are promises given sa pagdating ng Messiah. But without the Messiah, all the promised benefits, hindi natin, ma, hindi natin ma receive Because they will only be possible dun sa because of the promise na seed. So nakatak po natin dito, for to us a child is born. Sabi ito. So yung ground po, baksihan, ng mga pangako ng Diyos that one day there will be this transition from gloom chapter 8 verse 22 to glory from thick darkness to light all these are only possible because of Christ without Christ we will remain gloomy we will remain in darkness yun po yung implication po ng sinasabi doon eh sabi niya Even actually, si Matthew po, nung kinote ng Panginoong Sus, yung pasahay na to, sabi niya, ang ating Panginoong Sus, sabi niya sa Matthew chapter 4, verse 12, hanggang 17, Now, sabi sa verse 12 ng chapter 4 ng Matthew, Now, when he, the Lord Jesus Christ, heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Sebulun and Naphtali. Ito yung kanina na, na sinabi that there's judgment from the nation upon these tribes, upon this land, northern tribe. But then, sabi niya, and leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Sebulun and Naphtali. So that, sabi niya, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. It's fulfilled. Fulfilled in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a promise seed that in you and in, in your seed or through your seed 
all the nations of the earth might be blessed. Genesis 22. And the boss, sinasabi ng Panginoong Jesus, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, na sinunod ni Matthew, sinasabi doon, that the prophecy given by God through Isaiah might be fulfilled. And then verse 15, sabi po, sa Matthew chapter 4 pa rin, the land of Sebulun, the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea, specifically sinabi niya, the way of the sea, pinag-usapan natin kanina, and then, beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of Gentiles, sabi natin kanina, boundary, o after ng Sebulun and Naphtali, ito na yung land of the Gentile, na kung saan yung pangako ng Diyos, it's not just enclosed dun sa bahay ng Israel, but because all the nations of the earth might be blessed through the promised Messiah. And then sabi niya, sa pagdating sa verse 16, the people dwelling in darkness, kanina, di ba? Those who walk in darkness and those who dwell in the thick darkness, sabi niya dito, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. For those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death, on them light has dawned. Those people, sabi doon, living in the shadow of death. Alam niyo po yung shadow? Yung shadow mo, saan ka pumunta, sinusundan ka. So, yun po yung picture na sinasabi doon sa prophecy na kung saan there are people living in darkness. Na kung saan, like shadow of death. Because people are living in darkness as if yung kamatayan sumusundan sa kanila. Saan ka pumunta? Left, right, forward, backward. The shadow is following you. Shadow of death. Ito po, kanina sinasabi, there was a promise, condemnation given sa kanila as a warning of what is to come because of their unfaithfulness, because of their idolatry. They were of God. And yet, there was a promise given to them that there would come a Messiah who will rescue them from their gloomy conditions and from their Darkness na kung saan sila nabubuhay, namumuhay, and identified as children of the devil himself. And then, sabi doon, pagdating sa verse 50, 17, sabi ng Panginoon Jesus, mula sa kanyang mga labi, From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. After niyang sinabi that the prophecy given in Isaiah might be fulfilled, it was fulfilled by him. And then, sabi niya, pagdating sa verse 17, And from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven, is at hand. Ano siya sabi niya? Para maging, para ma achieve mo, obtain mo yung mga promises ng Diyos that you will be transferred from gloom to glory, from darkness into His marvelous light. Na sabi niya, people of that kingdom must from darkness, children of the devil, there must be a transfer. There must be a repentance. Na sabi niya, people must repent. And so, will be transferred from the dominion of Satan into the family of his dear and beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Saan? Nakita po natin dito yung preaching of the gospel, yung preaching of salvation. That there is a repentance. Sabi natin kanina ulit, there's a gospel message. And there's the benefits of this gospel. But without this gospel, without understanding this gospel, without embracing this gospel, you don't have the benefits. You don't have you being liberated from gloom and from darkness. <clears throat> Yun po yung mensahe na pinipreach ng kapaskuhan. It's not about exchange gift. It's not about magpadala ka ng sapatos. It's not about magpadala ka ng bagong damit. All those are good na na mga ginagawa natin. But they are not the essence, they are not the meaning of Christmas. Even Christmas light, hindi po yun ang essence ng Christmas light. Christmas is all about 
understanding that without Christ, apart from Christ, we are in a gloomy and dark condition. But because of Christ, because of what God has promised, there is a hope from gloom to glory, from darkness into His marvelous light. Yun po yung pensahe ng kapaskuhan. Sumpungan natin sa verse 1 pa lang, sa verse 2 pa lang ng Isaiah chapter 9. Samahan po natin, anyone who wish na magkabahagi doon sa kingdom of His marvelous light, kingdom of God, makita natin doon sa nasabi ng Pangsus, people must repent and receive yung gospel na kung saan the gospel is to is the Lord Jesus Christ. At napagdating sa verse 3 hanggang verse 5 ng Isaiah chapter 9, sabi doon, You have multiplied the nations. So, kanina pinag-usapan natin, Israel and beyond. At napagdating sa verse 3, the promise that is glorious because, makita natin dito, you have multiplied the nations. You have increased its joy and they rejoice before you. Sabi ko kanina, binasa ko kanina yung Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. And this time, mabasahin ko yung Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. Recalling yung pangako ng Diyos kay Abraham, called Abrahamic Covenant. Genesis 17, verse 5, No longer shall be, your name shall be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of multitude of nations. Multitude of nations. Ano sabi ni Isaiah? Chapter 9, verse 3. You have multiplied the nations. The promise given is Abraham will become a father, not just of the nation Israel, but will become a father of multitude of nations. That in him and through his seed, all the nations of the earth might be blessed. May pangako po. Ang ating pangasus, doon sa kapangangaral niya, minsan sinabi niya sa John chapter 10 verse 16. Sabi niya, I have, I, and I have also other sheep that are not of this fold. Ang sinasabi niya, pero kita ko mga tupa na wala dito sa sheep fold ng bayang Israel. They are outside. They are the gentle. But then sabi niya, but I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so they will be one flock and one shepherd. Maliwanag po ito sa ating Panginoong Jesus yung prophecy that there will be a blessing that is a promise na inclusion of the Gentile dun sa covenant ng Diyos that in Him all the nations of the earth will be less. You have multiplied, sabi sa verse 3, I said chapter 9, you have multiplied the nations. And then, makita nyo dito, verse 1, gloom. Verse 2, thick darkness and anguish. But then sa verse 3, there's a shift. Sabi niya sa verse 3, you have increased its joy. So from gloom, from darkness, from anguish, you have increased its joy. And they rejoice before you. And as with joy of at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. As nations are multiplied, joy is increased. There's increase in joy. So from gloom to glory, from darkness to light, and from gloom and darkness to joy and gladness. Hindi ba sabi ng Panginoon Jesus sa kanyang mga parable, sabi niya mayroong isang uh, coin na wala. Hinatap niya lahat ng silong ng kanyang panganan. Hanggang masumpungan niya yung coin. And nung nakita niya yung isang coin na wawala, hininvite niya ng mga kaibigan, come, rejoice with me. Na nawala yung coin na to at nasumpungan ko. Isang coin na wala, Naghanda siya because of joy na mahigit pa sa isang coin na malang ginastos. Because of the overflowing joy sa kanyang puso. And then, sabi niya, and after ng mga sinasabi niyo, so as in heaven, there is 
celebration in the presence of angels, the presence of God, over one sinner who repented. At naibalik muli yung kanyang broken relationship with God the Father. There's joy dun po sa kaligtasan ng bawat kaluluwa na nanunumbalik yung anong relasyon sa Diyos Ama because of what Christ has done. So makita po natin dito yung verse 3, maitindihan natin yung verse 3 na kung saan there's multitude. You have multiplied the nation. Kung saan sa luma, kaligtasan, hindi lamang sa bayang Israel, kaligtasan, not just about us. That's why we go. That's why we spend yung mga time natin, mga panahon natin, na ma-remind tayo ng mabuting balita, yung evangelism, that we are Christ witnesses. That all of us be experienced, be encountered, yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. And so, we are His witnesses, Acts 1.8. And then, back to sa verse 4 ng Isaiah chapter 9, verse 4 gives us the reason of the joy and gladness. Sabi sa verse 4, For the yoke of His burden and the staff of His shoulder the rod of his oppressor you have broken on the day, as on the day of Midian. Yung as of the day of Midian, pero sa famous na judge during the time ng mga pag-ahari, pag oppress ng mga Midianites sa bayang Israel. Ito ay si Gideon. Ba? Si Gideon, siya ay, nagreklamo siya nung, the, the fact na siya ay nag, nag yung kanyang trigo, yung kanyang grain, ay kinakas niya, ano ba tawag doon, no? Ano ba tawag sa threshing floor? So, nung kinakas niya yung kanyang trigo o yung kanyang ani, hindi usually sa exposed na lugar para pag nahagis mo, diba? yung chop, lilipad, matita na lang yung drink. So, pag na nagtatago siya, ginagawa niya iyon doon sa covered place, dahil natatakot siya na siya ay makita ng mga midianites. But then, nagpakita sa kanya yung angel ng Diyos, sabi niya, Oh, blessed ang sa mighty valor. Sabi sa kanya. Sabi sa kanya nung uh, angel of the Lord. And then, nagpakita, mighty, sabi niya. Ako yung pinakaaba sa aking mga kapatid. At sa, sa tribe ko, tribe of Benjamin, ako yung pinakaaba din. What kind of greeting is it? Sabi niya, the Lord is with you. How come the Lord is with us? Ino-oppress niya kami ng mga Midianites. Tapos sabi ng angel sa kanya, Surely you will deliver Israel from the Midianites. Yung kwento, pass forward. So, sabi lang sa kanya, Tawagin mo yung lahat ng mga Israelita. And I will give to you yung mga Midianites. So, nakagather siya ng na more than 20, I think 22,000. Kalaban nila, 300,000. Tapos natakot si Gideon. And nagsabi ng Diyos, 22,000 o 30,000 is too much. Sabi niya, sabihin ko sa kanila, so doon sa mga nabilang na yun, 300,000 kalaban, yung mga natatakot, pwede na umuwi. So, alis ang lahat. And then, may nakita na pang 3,000. Sabi niya, oh, kasi palusungan ko sila doon sa tubig. Yung iinom na parang aso, na parang, alam niyo, aso na, hindi gagamit ng kamay nila, pauwi mo na rin sila. At natira, 300 against 300,000. And then, and yet, the Lord gave victory sa Gideon because the battle is not about Gideon. Para wala sa lang ipagyabang. But ang kalang ipagyayabang lang ay yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos. So ano point po dito? Nakita natin yung sa verse yan, ang verse 5 is yung tema na from bandage, from slavery to freedom or liberation. Kanina, from gloom to glory, from darkness to light, in verse 2, and then verse 3 to 5, makita natin dito yung from bondage, from oppression to freedom and liberation. Sabi doon, sabi sa verse 4, babalikan ko, For the yoke of his burden, the stump of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as one in the day of Midian. The oppression, the slavery, 
has been broken. They will be set free. Why? Because of that promise, Messiah, who will come in the name of the Lord or in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is liberation, there is freedom from bondage as they were liberated during the time of Egyptian. And so, gaya din po sa akin, ayon sa scripture hindi ganina sa Luke, and even sa Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, you will call his name, ang sabi doon, Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Kung paano yung mga Israelita during this time, nung pinrapesa ito, they were oppressed by the Midianites and their surrounding the mga neighbors. Same thing sa ating kapalawanan, people are oppressed by Satan and sin. Then, sabi doon, Matthew 1, 29, Jesus Christ came so that we will be rescued, liberated from our sin. There is liberation from the Midianites. There is liberation from sin and its consequences. So, mga po natin dito, yung transcendent promise ng Panginoon, ng Diyos, it's not just about physical liberation from oppression from Roman Empire, from the Greek Empire, and even, hindi lamang yung liberation from the Spaniards, hindi lamang liberation from poverty, it's liberation of our soul from the consequence of sin na kung saan, unless, sabi ng Panginoong Sus, na kung saan, what a man profit, maging niya yung whole world and lose his soul. Can he repay, can he, may magagawa ba yung kanyang pera, yung kanyang strength para ibay ba ulit yung kanyang soul? Hindi po, wala po tayong magagawa. Because there's only one name in heaven and on earth by which we must be saved. And that is the message po na dinadala din po natin sa mga winiwitnessan po natin. It's not about telling them, say this prayer, oh, flee from the wrath to come. Na kung saan, as if, sabi nga, we are giving sometimes, or people gives the benefits without mentioning even the gospel. And of course, for sure, sino bang ayaw mapunta sa langit? Ay? Sino bang ayaw ng buhay na walang hanggan? Sino bang ayaw maayos na buhay? But all these are benefits and you will forfeit all these benefits without Christ sa ating mga buhay. And the same sa mga tao na wala ka kay Kristo. And then bakit po natin dito, Sa so verse 5, sabi niya, For every good of tromping warrior in a battle to move, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. Ito pong picture na to, sabi nga na, Midjan, Gidjon, ito yung battle, ito yung war. Tapos saan sinasabi doon, this picture of a battle of, a, of the Lord conquering, banishing yung kanyang enemy, and winning the ultimate battle. And because of that battle na won by the Lord Jesus Christ, that is yung ground for us. There's joy, there's gladness, there's celebration. But apart from the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no celebration at all. <coughs> Wala pong celebration without Christ. There's no Christmas celebration. There is Merry Christmas because of Christ. Kaya pag kami na bumati sa inyo, pag nag-message kayo ng WhatsApp, SMS, Facebook, Merry Xmas, ibalik po na wa ng maksinenda nyo, pag binati kayo ng ibalik nyo ng tanga. Without Christ, this uh, greeting, there is no Merry. Because without Christ, wala pong Merry Christmas. Because Christmas, yung pong sentro, o what, there is Christmas because of Christ. Pag pinutan mo ng X yung Christ, that's no longer Christmas. That's Xmas na lang po. Samantan po natin dito, pagdating sa verse 6 hanggang verse 7, so kanina, 
Verse 1, gloom to glory. Verse 2, darkness to light. Verse 3 hanggang verse 5. Nakakan natin dun yung, yung sa, sa point number 3, from bondage to freedom or from slavery to liberation or from oppression to liberation. And then finally, point number 4 natin, nakakan natin yung verse 6 hanggang verse 7, from oppressor to a savior. Oppress sila ng mga Midianites. Oppress sila ng Assyria. But then, from oppressor, they will have a savior. Sabi sa verse 6, For unto us a child, a son is given, a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, sabi niya, what kind of governor yung darating? What kind of governor, what kind of savior, what kind of ruler yung darating? Manidipik natin doon sa kanyang title, doon sa kanyang pangalan. Sabi doon, he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Not just Counselor. Pag sabi mong Counselor, he is wise. He is all wise. He knew. He knew kung ano yung pinagdadaanan natin. He knew kung ano yung naisip natin. But then it's not only wise, he's wonderful. He's wonderful counselor. <coughs> Anyone who seeks wisdom, who want wisdom must come to the wonderful counselor. He will give us counsel. But then he's not only wonderful counselor, and not only all wise, he knew everything, but he's mighty God. Para bang oxymoron, di ba? God, of course, God is mighty. But then, to give yung emphasis that He is mighty, He is mighty God. Hindi lamang siya always, He knew what He needs to do, but He is all-powerful. Kung ano yung gusto niya mangyari, kung ano yung dapat mangyari because of His wisdom, kaya niya papangyarihin because He is mighty God. It's different na alam mo kung dapat mong gawin, but you lack the power. You are dependent dun sa power ng iba. But because this counselor, this governor, who is a savior, he is not only all wise, but he is all powerful. Kaya niyang papangyarihin kung ano yung dapat mangyari base dun sa kanyang sovereign purpose. And then sabi doon, not only wonderful counselor, mighty God, but everlasting Father. Everlasting Father. There's a fatherly love. There's a fatherly compassion. Tinanam mo, di ba? Si Jesus Christ, wala namang asawa, di ba? Hindi siya nag-asawa. And yet, He will be called everlasting Father. May mga pasay sa Bible, let us see some of them. Isaiah chapter 53. Tinan po natin Isaiah chapter 53. Ano po yung sinasabi ito? Verse 10 ng Isaiah 53. Ito po yung sabi. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Yet, it was the will of the Lord, referring to God the Father, to crush Him, Jesus Christ, He put Him to grief, when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see, he, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. He will, the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Alam mo sabi doon? It was the will of God to cross him. And then sabi doon, he shall see his offspring and he shall prosper. He shall prolong his days. Actually, kinot po ito sa Hebrews. Na kung saan, sinasabi doon, the Lord Jesus Christ, because of his death, because of what he accomplished, that as if, yung mga nalampalataya sa kanya, he will bring them to God the Father as his offspring. That's why we have God the Father as our Father, and because of our faith, Jesus Christ, not only our brother, not only our Savior, He is our Father. He loves us like a father. Sa sabi, as a father, 
He loves us na nandun yung fatherly, tender care and compassion sa atin. Meron tayo sa sabi, especially pag tatay ka o nanay ka, di ba? Bago masaktan ng mga anak mo, magdadaan mo na sila sa ibabaw ng iyong kuntod, di ba? And yet, we do not have the power. We do not have, pwede ka lang, may word ka lang. But then, sabi doon, He is wonderful counselor and He is mighty God. Kung ano yung sinabi niya, kaya niya gawin. What He promised, He can fulfill. And then, makikula natin going back sa Isaiah chapter 9, sabi doon, And then, not only wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, but Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Lala natin, during this time, sinasakop sila ng Assyria, imagine what a chaos na meron kung sila ay sinasakop ng ibang bayan. And during that time, pag sinakop ng ibang bayan at kumalag ka, to give testimony to the surrounding nation para hindi ka pamarisan, itutuhog ka na parang barbecue, ito na parang impaled. Dati crucifixion, di ba? But then, i-impaled ka, itutuhog ka, and then, ilalagay dun sa parang parang bandila na nakatusok ka sa pwetan ka kong bibig, para yung lahat ng mga daraan, makikita kayo, pag sumuway kayo sa amin as an Assyrian Empire, yan ang mangyayari sa inyo. Kaya, takot na takot yung mga tao. Yun ang nangyayari kay uh, pag binasa niyo yung Esther at kay Mordecai. Sino yung nahang doon? Sino yung nahang po na naka-inempil? Sabi doon, galos. Pero yung galos sa sabi doon is impil. We said, kukumugin ka sa pwet at kukusok sa sabi doon. Point ko doon is, during this time na sinasakot sila, there is a great chaos, turmoil, and fear dun sa bayan na mananakop sa kanila. And yet, sinasabi, yung darating na pinangako ng Diyos, He will be called Prince of Peace. And He will bring peace. Kaya nga, pagbabasahin mo pa elsewhere, dun sa Isaiah, sabi na, there will come a time. Pag naglilid na siya, yung bata, pwede siya maglaro sa cobra, pwede maglaro yung, yung lion. Why? He will bring peace. And same thing po sa church, sa mga anak ng Diyos, there is peace. We can only have peace with each other because we receive reconciliation and peace with our God the Father. Without peace sa Diyos, there's no peace among us. But because we have been reconciled to God in Christ, peace among us is possible. Kaya nga po, nakakalungkot yung mga churches na kung saan churches supposed to be imahin ng kung ano yung ginawa ng Diyos, imahin ng Diyos, and there's peace, there is love, there's harmony. But then there's devoided dun sa pag-ibig, devoided dun sa kapayapaan, there is only pride, there is only competition, and there is only na mga magaling na lang. This should not be a mark ng isang church ng Panginoong Jesus. A church of the Lord Jesus Christ should be marked with love, humility, at yung peace that transcends. Na kung saan nagbumula doon sa kapayapaan na nakamutan natin sa ating Diyos because we receive peace from God through Christ. There is peace among us. But then, sa mga sad to say, even na sila sabi natin, Churches, like-minded churches, even same denomination, there is parang may competition sa mga churches. It is so, so sad na mga nangyari. Because the remnants of sin, because of pride sa atin na mga Christian. And then pagdaling sa verse 7, sabi niya, of the increase of his government, itong governor na to, itong mamumuno na to, itong savior na to, from oppressor of the surrounding nation, mga Assyrian, sabi doon, of the increase of his government, this governor, not other than the Lord Jesus Christ, and of the of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and of his kingdom, 
to establish it and to uphold it with justice, with righteousness, and from this time forth and forevermore. Sabi doon, yung governor na to, hindi lamang siya wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, but he will bring justice and he will rule, sabi doon, with righteousness forevermore. Ba? Nung election, yung Pilipinas, para bang pinong apart siya, kung saan, makita mo yung mga Facebook, di ba? Hindi ako na wala akong Facebook, but then makita mo yung mga nag-aaway-aaway sa Facebook, churches, dalawang pastor, nag-aaway because yung isa dun sa ganito, yung isa dun sa ganon. And then nagsasabi tayo sa Facebook, magkakapatid, ba? Isang pamilya, nanay-tatay. Because ito, bet niya ito, ito, bet niya ito, ba? Yung Pilipinas is, ang daming nawatak na mga, nawasak na mga, Russian because of the nakalipas na election. But then, yung pinakako ng Diyos na darating na governor, hindi po siya ganun. Bagkus, he will bring righteousness, he will bring peace and justice, sabi doon, forevermore. And then, actually, sabi doon, binanggit niya, on the throne of David. Ito yung the biblical promise. Ano ang kalaman ni David sa atin? Right? Actually, itinan mo, Isaiah pa rin, hindi tayo naman labas na mga Isaiah so far. Kaya rin Isaiah ulit, chapter 55 naman, kanina Isaiah 53 verse 10. Kaya naman is Isaiah chapter 55, let's see verse 3. Isaiah 55 verse 3. Sabi po dito sa Isaiah 55 verse 3. Incline your ear and come to me. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make you an everlasting covenant. I'm just an exesilita, hindi lamang sa bayang Israel. Because even, sabi niya, and I will make you an everlasting covenant by steadfast sheer love for David. Ano po siya sabi doon? Kung paano yung pag-ibig ng Diyos kay David, sabi doon, because of what this seed, because of what this mighty God, this wonderful counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace, accomplished, sabi doon, yung pag-ibig ng Diyos kay David, as if yung pag-ibig din niya sa bawat isa na nakipag-isa kay Kristo. Same love na meron ang Diyos para sa atin. Isa rin po ang gano'n po, diba? Nung saan, sabi ng Diyos kay David, a man after my own heart. Sabihin nyo ng isang tatay sa isang anak, diba? Kung sabihin nyo ng tatay ko sa akin, hindi ako makakatulog, isusulat ko yun, papasulat ko sa kanya sa sa diary ko at hapang buhay ko, babasahin ng sunod ng tatay ko. At then, Sinabi ng Diyos kay David. And sinasabi ng Diyos, the same love I have for you. Isn't it wonderful na yung pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin ay ganun na lamang. And that is possible because of this promised seed na ipinangako niya doon sa Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to 7 na ating pinag-aaralan. Ano po yung kapaskuhan ngayon? Ano po yung liwa ng kapaskuhan? Pagka babati tayo ng Blessed Merry Christmas, ba? Ano natin, kahapon nagpalamunodan tayo ng mga exchange gift, si Ate Gina, yung minunod siya ni Sister, kaya wala po ay kahapon, may mumunod po sa inyo. It's not sabi na natin na kahapon, it's, it's not about exchange gift, right? It's recognizing the greatest gift of all ay binigay ng Diyos Ama. Yung pinaka nag-iisang great sa Kanya ay binigay niya para sa akin. John 3.16, di ba? Tago nga, mensahe. Ito yung first message natin sa Kapaskuhan. Sa Daksaman <coughs> ng December, sa Diyo kanina, pinangunahan natin sa linggong ito. Next week, si Pastor Lawrence. Third week, si Pastor Dong. And sa araw mismo ng Kapaskuhan, si Pastor Dexter, bibigyan niya ng text ng John chapter 3, 
verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His greatest gift, His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Ito yung ng kapaskuhan. It's not about any, anything sa mundong ito. And then, going back on it, the promise, there was the gloom, but there's promised glory. There's darkness, but there's promised light. There is this oppression, there's tyranny, but there's promised liberation and freedom because of Christ. And there is this oppressor, sa mga Assyria, and sin is oppressor. It oppresses us. It kills joy. Hindi kill joy. It kills joy. Yung pure and tunay na joy because of sin, it kills yung tunay na joy. And so, because of Christ, this oppressor, this sin, this tyranny, praise God, there is a Savior na binigayan ng Diyos so that our joy might be full, might be complete. Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus in John chapter 10 verse 12, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Christ came, that you may have life and have it to the fullest. Have it in full. Yun po yung diwa na mensahe na kapaskuhan. Glorious to glo gloom to glory, darkness to light, run bandage to freedom, oppressor to a savior. Let's all stand for in the spring. Let's bow our head and let us come to the Lord. And before I will give the benediction for even closing prayer, I encourage you to give at least two minutes na magpag-usap tayo sa Panginoon in the light sa, sa kanyang salita sa hapon ito. And ask Him, ano nga ba yung mensahe niya para sa atin sa hapon ito, dun sa dadali natin, paglabas natin sa kwarto nito, na gagawin po natin to obey Him ayon sa kanyang mga salita. Let us come to the Lord po in prayer and then we will close. Thanks God for the privilege to participate to sa kanya, to sa Lord's Supper in commemoration to, to sa kanya, sa kanya buhay, sa kanya kamatayan, so that yung mga benefits na mga pangako ng Dios ay magin applicable po o magin possible po sa buhay natin na bagamat ay magsalanan Christ died for us.
Meron po kayo yung elements for the Lord's Supper para po tayo maglalangin. I'll give you benediction. Sabi po ni Apostle Pablo doon sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then there are Solemn warning, dun sa baba, sabi niya, Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks in the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself or herself, then so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. So, maluanag po sa atin sa tanang Panginoon, let us be reconciled sa Diyos. I will give to ano po, na pleading po sa inyo. Una po, if if you are not yet a baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can pass po yung Lord's Supper. You are not baptized believer. And pangalo po, if there are sins that you need to be confessed, Panginoon, let us be reconciled. Let us seek the Lord's forgiveness before partaking of the Lord's Supper. And then, in context of pangalo kanina, sabi mo, if you are not baptized believer, and then, it is our prayer, and next time po, makasama namin kayo, by first, the challenge is to come to us para po ma- uh, magawa po natin yung baptism ninyo kung you are a believer so that next time nandun yung joy na sama-sama po tayo mag-partake ng Lord's Supper. Let us all partake po if you have examined your heart para sa ating Lord's Supper. bow our head and receive the uh, closing prayer and benediction. Ama namin Diyos, muli maraming salamat Panginoon sa inyong kabutihan, sa inyong pagandahan ito. Lord, sa kabila Panginoon ng turmoil na meron Panginoon, not just during the time ng mga Israelita as they were besieged by Asenia Panginoon. Lord, kaya may dito sa kasabuyan Panginoon. Pagamat kami ay nagpupuri, nagpapasalamat na merong kanayaan magpuri sa lugar na ito. At there are not of things, Panginoon, that you have blessed us with. And yet, Lord, marami itong tao sa paligid namin. And even us, Lord, na kung saan mga bagay that could draw us away from you or our attention away from you, Lord. Lord, help us to remain focused doon sa meaning, doon sa significance ng kapaskuhan ng Himo. And help us, Lord, na yung aming mga mata ay huwag po mawala from focusing o yung aming attention sa aming mga tagapagligtas, sa aming Panginoong Jesus. Away from Himo God and turn sa mga anamang mga material ng Himo na available sa aming mga tagapagligtas. Help us each day yung aming relasyon sa inyo, ng Himo, sa aming Panginoong Jesus ay lalo na lumalago at lalo na nag-uumapaw. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po. Nawa, help us din po na yung message ng kapaskuhan, yung pure, unadulterated, unvarnished message, Panginoon, na aming tinanggap sa iyong magsalita, ay siya rin po, Panginoon, na maging uh, witness namin, maibahagi namin as we 
seek to honor you in our obedience in sharing the gospel sa mga tao na wala pang relasyon sa inyo. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po. Kayo ang patuloy na magpaati na dakila sa buhay ng bawat isa at sa buhay ng inyong iglesia. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen. Amen.